Bro, I agree. It is so f the scam artist, man. Already making nothing, dude. Spotify is f***ing us in the ass. You're being like, hey, can you give me some money right now? I see Spotify f***ing you in your ass right now. Could you like, you know, with your hand that you're like using to hold yourself up from getting f***ing that? Could you use one of those hands to reach in your wallet and give me some money? Okay, we got another scam, guys. Let's go. We got a problem in the producer community, and that problem is scamming. Now, there's uh, so Everybody's scamming, apparently. What the f***? I gotta get in on this. I need some money. Guys, come up with a scam for me. I need a scam to pull. So many different scams, but this one that I'm about to talk about today, that I'm about to show you today, is one that I've seen a lot. Don't need to weaver to stop my cat from doing crack under my house fun. You're sleeping right now, and I think it's because you're coming off a crack binge. I don't know, he's sleeping right now. Let me just tell you that, he's sleeping right now, and it's eight o'clock. And it's one that can be easily prevented. So I'm about to show you, okay, this story from this guy who sent me a DM on Instagram okay. and went through how he almost got scammed. If you don't know who I am, I'm Nile Waves. I produce for artists like Lil Baby, Pusha T, Raul Rodriguez, Chris Brown, oh, he just... and a lot more. I only say I like how he said that so fast. That so that you know when you come to this channel, you get something real, and you learn it from someone that has actually, you know, gone through the process of getting placements, who's going through that process, who's working with artists, who's really in the field. I'm not a YouTuber, right? I'm not a YouTube guy. I'm a producer. I make music. All right. Thank you. I need help. I'm going to show you exactly how this process is supposed to go, so that you know what constitutes as a real opportunity versus a scam. Producer says, I need help. I'm sorry if this is gonna be a lot to read, but you're the only person I know that has gotten placements that will reply to me. So I'm supposedly getting my first placement and the artist is YTV Fat. And the whole thing is that this producer, whose name is, not gonna say, it, he contacted me yesterday and we've, ex and we've exchanged the beats and everything. I said- Just show it on screen, bro. Man, you can tell he really isn't a YouTuber. He got back to me and told me that he will use two of my beats. He gave me a contract and stuff from the label and everything was correct, so I signed it. And now, as of today, he gets back to me and says something about a miscellaneous fee. Uh, yeah, dude, there's, a, is there's like a miscellaneous fee, an editing fee, uh, editor's fee, anything like that, bro. That's a scam. That is a scam. Like, I've seen some shit like that before in my DMs. They were like, I mean, I wasn't really considering it. But they're like, yo, we love your music, man. We, you know, we could share it. Uh, we could share it in like, uh, you know, I work for like Hip Hop DX or whatever. And, uh, you know, you just got to pay us a little bit, you know, for a, a little editor's fee and we'll share your music in the art in the, in the mag, bro. Nah, dog. Nah. Right. And it said nothing about that in the contract. Of course not. Because why would you have to pay in order to clear a beat that you produced with a label or an artist that is trying to get the beat from you? They're trying to pay you for the beat. Why would you need to pay? Right flag. Yep. No, he's right. It says he tried. He told me something about a miscellaneous fee and it said nothing about that in the contract. I told him that and he said it was mandatory and that it should have been in the contract. Right. Cap. Cap. So he talks to the label, I'm guessing, and says that the contract will be adjusted thereafter since the miscellaneous fee wasn't on there. I didn't agree with that. And I wanted to see if you ran into this. No, I've never ran into that because that's not how labels clear beats. That's not what happens, all right? So a lot of times you'll see the scam with um, washed up producers, uh, producers who they may have gotten a place. Bro, I, I was thinking about scamming. It's like, you know what, maybe we should do this, bro. Maybe we should, uh, you know, charge people. What was it? It wasn't editor's fee. What was it? I can't remember what the fee is. We're gonna charge people some kind of fee though. You know, in 2006, and now they're acting like you know, they're a big time industry person, but whole time they don't really work with producers. No, they don't really work with artists no more. They're just trying to scam people. Um, you'll see this with uh, grimy, fake A&Rs. Like, these would be people who have a &R in their bio. A&R. Well, I mean, there could be real A&Rs with a &R in their bio. And their, and their username. We could do some scam research. I like that. And Unforeseen marijuana experiences. No other a &Rs follow them. They'll have Atlantic Records in their bio. Nobody from Atlantic Records follows them. Nobody knows them. Who are you? Right? We don't know you. Why? Because you're not really an a and You're faking. You'll have fake managers do the same thing. People, oh, I'm a I talent. I manage talent. I manage talent. 
but you never see the artists that they manage. You never see the producers that they manage. They Imagine just, faking being a a talent agent. Like, wh why? Why fake doing that? Like, fake being an actor or something. Fake being something more interesting, like a music artist or something, dude. Like, what? what why f talent agent? Manage talent, right? And they send you messages like this. Oh, I could get you a beat with this person. I could get you a beat with that person. And yeah, you got a song with this person. You just got to send me a fee. Really? I got to send you a fee? <laughs> now, I've seen the scam with people who are on, like, uh, who claim to be on, on magazines, yeah. um, they'll hit yeah. you up and be like, yo, I could do it. I'm, I want to do a, a, a article on you. Like you. Bro, bro, what did I just say? What did I just say, man? Oh, called it. I haven't seen this video yet. You hard. Like, I like your music, man. Like, you hard. Bro, the f this actually, this happened to me. I didn't f pay for it, though. I just saw it. And I was like, you scamming me? You're scamming me right now, bro. Yeah, it was like XXL or some sh yeah, I bro. I appreciate that. I appreciate yeah, that. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Anyways, it's gonna be fifty dollars. It's gonna be fifty dollars. Maybe a hundred. You don't f it a hundred. So what's 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 the what's the article process look like? He's like, oh well, you just gotta pay this pay. Bro, I agree. It is so f the scam artist, man. Already making nothing, dude. Spotify is fing us in the ass, and you're being like, hey, can you give me some money right now? I see Spotify fing you in your ass right now. Could you like, you know, with your hand that you're like using to hold yourself up from getting fing in the ass? Could you use one of those hands to reach in your wallet and give me some money? Why I gotta pay to be an article? I thought you wanted to do it on me. Yeah, I, I thought you liked my fucking music, bro. I thought you liked that. I was feeling good. I thought I was. I thought I was him. Nah, they trying to get some bread out of you, right? So you need to watch out for uh, A and R's who nobody follows. You know, no other producers follow them. Um, no other. See, the thing is, a lot of producers I know were following this guy. A lot of producers, maybe he was real, bro. Maybe he was real and he was just also scamming. He was also trying to get some money. A&Rs followed him. Nobody from the record label that they... I don't know any other A&Rs, so I wouldn't know. And if they say they're an A&R, ask them what their record label is. You know what I'm saying? Ask them um, who they work for, who they work with. You know, who are some other A&Rs you work with? Ask them stuff like that. They could just make... Up. I'm not gonna be able to fact check that. Yeah, I worked with uh, Notorious B.I.G. <laughs> wait, 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 hold on. Messing with the volume on the TV messes with the lighting, the like the brightness of the lighting. Yes, yeah, so you just increased that. Wait, don't do that again. My girlfriend just adjusted the, the volume on the TV and it fucked with the lighting. <laughs> when it comes to fake producers, fake art, like there's producers who will literally put acapellas over their own beats you know, they'll, they'll, they'll take an unreleased uh, future song, right? They'll take the acapella from that and then they'll put their own beat on it and they act like they got a placement. Like, you yo, like, what are you doing this for? Like, <laughs> you didn't really get a placement. Stop it. Stop capping, right? And then they'll be like, yo, I, I got a placement with Drake. Just slap on like the fucking, um, the God's Plan acapella or like fucking uh, on a different beat. <laughs> Get your beat to future. Next thing you know, you're sending him bread because you're trying to get your beat placed. Whole time, you don't know that you don't have to send anybody money to place your beat. That's not how it works. This is how it really goes. If I know somebody in an artist camp, right? It doesn't even just have to be the engineer. It could be somebody around the artist because sometimes that happens. Sometimes there'll be somebody around the artist that's cool with the artist that, you know, they, they a and R them. They get beats from producers and they play the beats for the rapper or they beats from producers send it to the engineer and the engineer plays the beats for the rapper. Sometimes, you know, artists move like that, right? So let's say I have somebody in the camp and play the song for here. whoever. You know, they play the song for the artist. The fridge is right next to Or, me. I mean, not the song. They play the beat for the artist. Anyways, the fridge is like in arm's reach here, guys. Let's say it's the engineer, right? The engineer plays the beat for the artist. The artist is like, yo, this is hard. I'm gonna hop on this. They hop on it. Engineer might hit me up two, three weeks later, like, yo, you got one with this artist. I'm lit, right? I'm happy. Cool. I got one with the artist. Two, three more weeks later, they might be like, yo, send me your information so we could clear this beat. We got to send this. I got to send this information to our label because we actually chose that song to go on a project or we chose that song to be a, a single. So cool. Okay, cool. They send me a message. Now, this message could be from an a &R. This message could, it's usually going to be from an a like most of the time it's going to be from a real anr why do you have to know anybody though can't you upload a youtube theoretically to be found that's true but it's probably easier if you know somebody 
you could theoretically upload a beat that like gets a lot of traction on YouTube and then gets placed based on that. But yeah, not as likely. So either I'm going to get an email, I'm going to get a DM or I'm going to get a text message. And it's going to be someone saying, hey, now nah. you imagine getting fucking placements from a text message, bro. Oh, can we clear this beat with you? Lucky. We have a song that's used your beat. We want to clear this and uh, discuss, you know, contract and terms and stuff like that. So most of the time where I'm at now, I'm going to send that to my manager and my lawyer and they'll negotiate and stuff. Sorry, flex over here like that for me. Make sure everything's straight. Um, when I was first starting, if I was new, then it would just be me. Um, and in that situation, it's just like, OK, cool. What's 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 the situation here? Uh, they might say, OK, cool, we're going to give you fifteen hundred. I'm like fifteen hundred. Ah, can we do two thousand? They say, okay, cool, we'll do two thousand. I'll say, okay, cool, let's do two thousand, right? So, next thing that happens, they'll send me a flex, man. Ah, oh, the flex. A docu sign. I'll elect. I'm at fifty hundred. That's too much. Give me a thousand. Electronically <laughs> sign that contract, and then I'll send them an invoice. Now that invoice is gonna have, you know, information on it, so that they can pay me, and. You know, it'll probably say like net 30 or net 60. And that just means that 30 days or 60 days is the amount of time in which they're supposed to pay me within. Now, does that always happen? What do you think? These labels be playing games, man. You ask any producer, every producer has a story of a label taking like a year to pay them. Yeah. Like it's crazy. It's really crazy how, how labels be acting. Yeah, if they're saying 60, bro, they're broke. They're probably broke and they're just like trying to buy time or they're hoping you're gonna forget you know we got to get that producer union thing up and around. i don't know if sunny digital actually started that yet but that's something we got to get together because these be playing sometimes man but i ain't gonna get into that right now i ain't gonna say they be wanting us to like clear them they be hit they be banging the line like what do you think bro or bro babe <laughs> what do you think bro is is a watermelon smash um that's a tier right producer union bro there'd be so much fucking, uh scabs Bro, there'd be so many scabs. Producer union could never work in a million years, guys. No, you're dreaming. You're fucking dreaming. All that, no, dude. Any sort of creative union, it will never work, bro. Everyone would backstab each other. People would just be like, yeah, fuck it. I'll work for half as much as that guy, the guy who's holding out over there. Some kids will do it for credits in Fortnite. Bro, some of them will do it for free. It's the same thing with like DJing and playing shows. It's hard to get paid for it unless you have a, like, you can bring in an audience. If you can bring in an audience, then they, they have some sort of incentive to pay you. And if you can't bring in an audience, then they're just gonna find somebody who will do for free. You gotta follow up like 15, 20 times before they clear clear them. Uh, man, I could, I don't even wanna talk about that right now. Cause it's definitely some money in the ethers that I need to go and get, right? So. He's like, he's like speaking of that. <laughs> I'll be right back. I'll be right back, all right? But it's always being handled. It's, it's being handled. Most of the time, when all the ducks are in a row, all the paperwork is right, you'll be getting that money when you're supposed to get it. Especially if you have a good lawyer and a good, you know, a good manager that are on top of it, you don't get that bread, right? So, so I feel like overall, I would assume that the amount of money you make as a producer has to have been going down and continue to go down for a long time just due to the oversaturation of music producers. You know, the more producers that produce, the more than they make good beats, the less that people are able to charge because they're just like, well, why would I get this beat from you? I can get that beat from that guy over there for, you know, half the price, right? That's basically the end of that. You never will have to pay them I to mean. clear your beat you'll never have to pay them to clear your music that's a scam so now you know what the scam looks like and how it really goes all right it's not waves i mean i kind of already knew this i feel like this is really just like newcomer information you know um it's a lot of people that have been asking me for mentorship and stuff like that i have a link in my description if you want to see if one-on-one -on -one mentorship would be, would be good for you you know uh my bro the, the producer union is not gonna work bro it's not gonna work i'm telling you producers are Dirty motherfuckers, bro. Not all of them. Not you guys. You guys are cool. <laughs> Everyone else, though. A moderate portion of music producers are too desperate. Or really, in any creative field, it's not just music producers. And because of that, 
you're going to see a lot of people like being scabs or doing underhanded sh in order to like get past other people who are in the union. Like it's not working, man. There ain't, it's not going to work. I can tell you for sure. That's life though, isn't it? No, I think it's especially worse in creative communities though, because there's no expected amount of money to be paid. You know, there's no like range of money that you're supposed to be paid no matter what. So because of that, people will go lower and lower just to like make sure they get paid or they're like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll work for less than that guy over there. I'll y'all do for half the amount of money, right? Mentorship is just to make a whole bunch of better producers. I want you to meet whatever goals you have, whether that's getting placements, making money from this. There's no statutory rate. You have to be paid for a beat or like production work. You know, you know, uh, I think there might be for studio musicians. I can't remember for sure, um, but yeah like that because of that since there's no like laws really in place for that it's just gonna lead to people just like and being like you know what i'll work for less than minimum wage i'll work for less than minimum wage gaining the confidence to actually finish your music to be consistent okay, well i need some confidence bro i can't finish my music that's wait and actually show up every day you want me to be that accountability partner you want me to be that person that's like oh, oh that sounds expensive as shit, bro i'm gonna pay you to help me finish my music every day yeah it's a race to the bottom i agree there's just no there's no guidelines you know what i mean if there were guidelines i feel like it could work but it, since there's no guidelines and no one gives a shit about setting those guidelines for music producers because like congress is like what the fuck is a music producer not happening dude